Docpad website to regenerate right then. So that way we don't have to keep doing regenerate every 24 hours. We just have to regenerate when changes happen. Huh? Yeah. So for the documentation. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we pull it in um, just once and we expose that to the to the templating engine. Yeah. What will happen is if on the regeneration for real, for example, Twitter. Yeah, this, this, it's surprising how unreliable some APIs are. <laughs> so this used to be a problem. It's no longer a problem. Originally, like say six months ago, my website would just like go down and I was just like, what, why is this happening? And it's because like, you know, when JavaScript tries to access something that wasn't actually there, then JavaScript like has a panic attack, right? Um, so, but now, um, if we have a feed that did pass, like, you know, it was valid JSON, we'll just use the cache copy of it. Um, however, if they change the syntax or the behavior, you have to have checks to make sure the, the syntax is what you're expecting. With CoffeeScript, that's pretty easy because we could just say, you know, if that tweet is actually there, then go in and create it out. But right now, we just assume that it's all going to be okay. Except for this bit here, we have this or array. Sometimes <laughs> we could just get back an empty string or maybe like it just corrupted JSON, in which case we just want to fall back to an empty array and then just not show anything. And that's if it didn't already have something successful in the cache. Yeah. So isn't it better to load all of that data asynchronously? Not go via the server? My, my Twitter stuff doesn't update that much. So it's just like, do I want to hit the performance impact of always <coughs> fetching that so often? Or do I want to just, you know, pull it in once every hour and then have that real big performance hit? And that's like one of the benefits um, that people have found with Docpad is they can get hit by Hacker News or whatever and their website won't crash, <laughs> right? Which happens like so often because it's just static stuff. So that's one of the, the benefits there, yeah. So that's why we've gone this direction of the static site generation, like you get that speed. And if you need that dynamic stuff, just tell it to regenerate more or add that dynamic true header if you really want it to redo everything every single time. So what's next? What do we have next? Blogging, we covered blogging, we covered collections. Often a question is, how can I actually do RSS in Atom? And it's, it's, it's the same way as you would this listing here. We would just add a RSS file. We can see this on the Beverly website. I mean, the BL Upton website. We just have this Atom file. So let's say this is just XML. So we just define our XML structure and then we say, okay, go through posts and just output everything. That's how we would do an RSS feed. Now, let's get into more advanced stuff. And let's say I actually want to have a side title for my website that stays the same. So I probably want to say my awesome website. And then I would probably want to show the page title, right? That's generally how we do things. So I could put it there and then we now see in the title, I now have my awesome website. But this probably shouldn't go in our layout. This should probably just go in one place where we can define all the special data for our website. So does everyone agree? I would agree. <laughs> so we can actually extend the template data ourselves. So let's call this, let's add site and then we'll add the title, my awesome website. So now we've just added <coughs> this, so we can just say, okay, now expose our site title. And in this case, Stockpad picked up that template data change and we can see we've now got my awesome website. Um, let's just call this awesome website and yeah, it's worked. So now we're actually taking stuff out of our layouts and adding it to our template data. This gets quite important because we can now start 
adding common abstractions into our template data as well. I can put functions in here as, if I want. And what we saw earlier with the get collection, that is just a function exposed to our template data that takes in like a name, something like that, and then it says, okay, get the database collection and then I think get child collection or something like that and actually pull in the name. So we can just write functions in here just as we would normally. An interesting thing, um, probably worth noting with CoffeeScript is the last statement is always returned. So this is exactly the same as writing return, which allows us to write pretty neat like one-liners that are so concise. Now, another thing some people may be wondering is what is this at? What is this at symbol I keep seeing places? It's exactly the same as just writing this. It's just a nicer convention that Docpad provides. So we would have seen this in our index page. We have, for instance, we say, okay, this dot get collection. So that's fetching the get collection function from our template data, and this post variable is just defined locally inside our template data, or inside our template engine as it executes. So that that's just what that's about. But let's probably jump to see how these abstractions can actually apply in like a real world website. So like the Docpad website. I mean the BL Upton website. So I'll learn to type correctly at some point. And let's say for this ranking, I don't actually want like this ranking is pulled in dynamically. It could be two, three, five, a hundred. I don't really know. But because of that, I still want to say second. So in my CoffeeScript file, I say, okay, get rank, and then it'll tell me which suffix I should use for that rank. And in my template data, I would have an assist, like a template helper to say, okay, get the, get the stuff from the feeder, so this user's stuff, and then find myself in there and add the appropriate suffix. If that feed fails, just return what I thought I was last time, right? So we can start doing, extending the template data with our own helpers. For instance, get prepared title is used by our layout to say, okay, if our document actually has a title, then display that title first and then the site title. If our document title doesn't have, our document doesn't have a title, then just show the site title, right? So some pretty basic abstractions we're able to move out into our template data rather than actually having it in every single layout. Now, for this BL Upton website, we have multiple layouts because our posts have a different layout to our index page. We probably want to show that for our posts, we probably show, want to show the heading. And this is, I, I just love coffee cup. Um, so here we say, okay, if we have the document title for this blog post or whatever is using this, then actually show this header with the page title and then like the date this was made, output our content, things like that. So it's, it's pretty cool stuff. Now we covered collections, we covered template data. So yeah, this is like all the site data I have. So I've abstracted out the URL for my website, the title, my email, things like that. Now I've even abstracted out the scripts that I use on my website. So rather than having that in the layout, I just have it there. And it would probably look just like this. So I get my blog scripts, I add the site scripts to it. So jQuery, um, whatever else I'm using. And the benefit of adding it this way is Docpad is then aware of those scripts. And if we have a plugin that can then minify our JavaScript, it can then say, okay, get everything inside scripts and then actually minify it or concatenate it in that order. Scripts is probably, the block scripts is probably good because we know which order it should be in. So we'll probably use that for concatenation. When if we were doing minification, we would probably go the get collection route or maybe get database, um, find all, that have the out extension, so the compiled extension JavaScript. And that way we could then go through and minify everything. Now, when we start getting into more dynamic stuff, Docpad allows us to have particular events. 
Often at times we may want to hook into something along the docpad process and perform a specific task. For instance, on my website, I have multiple domains that all point to the same things. For instance, if I go to lupton.cc, which is what I use on my email, then this will hit the docpad server and say, okay, is our request for the lupton.cc domain? If it is, then let's redirect back to blupton.com so they get that redirect. I see some heads popping up, so maybe I'll do it like that. And I'll probably turn on Word. Is Word Wrap on on this one? No. Word Wrap. Whoa. So it kind of looks like that. This is just using the Express.js server. Express.js is a Node.js project. It's quite popular, um, which uh, provides quite a nice interface for writing a web server. So by use, we just say, we add a middleware. And a concept of middleware is when we receive a request, there may be certain actions we want to perform. For instance, authentication is one of those actions. So we would want to say, okay, when we get this request, go to the authentication middleware. And if we need to authenticate, then let's start authenticating. If we don't need to authenticate, then let's continue on to the next middleware. This is when we start getting into interesting node conventions, which, we would often see this next callback, or generally the last argument to a function is this callback generally called next. So next is generally just always what we want to do when we complete or the next thing we should forward on. So right here, this redirect says, okay, let's redirect and I want to stop there. I don't want to continue on. When if we don't need to redirect, if we are on blupton.com, then let's continue to the next thing, whatever that may be. Does that make sense to everybody? Sweet, so you're gonna rock up with Node when you get to it. You're, you know one of the basics to Node.js. Another thing we probably wanna do is we wanna extend the routes and add things like if aliases for different projects. So this alias is um, all these old URLs they used to use when I used to host my jQuery plugins on my own website. Where now it actually redirects to the GitHub page for those jQuery plugins. So this is great if often at times we have we're migrating our website from somewhere else and we want to support the same URL structure. So we just extend the server. We just use the server extend event and we continue on. Other examples are for the docpad website. This, this is when we start getting into some pretty nifty things. Our projects. So here I require a whole bunch of node dependencies so I can do interesting things. I specify some different configurations because I'm using a different structure here. Um, so this is our site directory that we used to before, our root directory, and this is where I start abstracting a lot more stuff out. I've used this particular project structure on projects where I've had to do extensive extending of the Node.js web server. For instance, writing like a, a Node.js API thing which handles requests from different places. So I'd use server extend and then I would probably just do something like, okay, require um, the routes the routes file. You don't need the extension with require and then just pass it over our arguments and then this routes file will handle all of our extensions to the server. So one of the examples here for the server extend is whenever I get a 404, so this is if we couldn't I'll show you. So we have some special pages which is our 404 page, we also have a 505 page. So if .pad can't find anything, it will look for a 404 document. And this particular document will do an AJAX request to my pushover route, which is a custom route I've written to then notify my phone that, oh my God, there's a 404, please fix this, right? So don't go to the .pad website and then just like repetitively 404 it. <laughs> Otherwise I'll get a lot of notifications on my phone and I won't be too pleased. Now, for the .pad website, I did mention how it pulls in 
our docpad documentation. So our docpad documentation is just a GitHub repo. A whole bunch of markdown files that we want to do. So this is our index page and this is our metadata. So we say ignore this page because this isn't part of our documentation. It's just welcome to our documentation. And if we want to go to the plugins, which I believe is in, yeah, in community, then this is our plugin listing. So it's just a markdown file. And we want to pull this into our actual docpad website. So we hook into this generate before event and we pull in this docpad <coughs> documentation repository into our source directory. So it gets pulled into this source documents docs every single time before a particular generation. And we have a little check here. Um, if we're initial generation, so if reset is true, then pull it in. Otherwise, if we're just a regeneration, then don't pull it in. Otherwise, regenerations will be very, very slow because we're always doing a git pull request. Now, we do some more complicated things like that, but I don't think I probably need to go into that because it, it's getting to more advanced things. So I think at this stage, we've seen probably the power of docpad, so I'm open to questions now. And we'll take this wherever you want this to go. Okay. So just how we would put an image in to in a dotpad website. All right. So that would go into our files directory. So we have a bunch of images here. So files is just anything we don't want compiled and binary files. So our images just go in this files directory. That's all there is and we would just reference it. Where would we reference that? Maybe in our CSS. No, 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 from... Okay. Pardon? Uh, uh, reference from templates. References from yeah. templates. Well, uh, for example, uh, I, get, uh, I want to build some, uh, uh, some block with my portals. Oh, okay, yeah. Or maybe right. a header which has a uh, logo, so you put it in the uh, template and load everything. Okay, so let's. Um, <coughs> there's a good example of this. Let's say I'm pretty sure. Dot pen dots showcase. Oh, whose website is it? It's Morgan Sutherland. This guy is a photographer and he's used Docpad to actually pull in. So these are all these different photos that he's used. And the way he would probably do this is inside 30 minutes more. Okay, that's fine. So let's go back to our basic my website and let's get a, a image. I don't know. Let's just save that image and I hope he doesn't mind. <laughs> so, projects. This is Hasgeek, my website. So I'll save it to files. Let's make a new directory here called images. And this is called one.jpg, so pretty basic. Now, if I wanted, so we can see it's there and it's already been added to the out directory. Now let's add this to the meta refresh. So I could do it in just like, you know, the image source, images, one.jpg. Now, if we go back to localhost, we go. So we've got that image there. That's, that's one way to do it. If we wanted to add that into the layout, right? If we wanted to have the layout actually perform the image rendering, then we can just add it here. So like, image. So this metadata can be whatever you want. We can add as much metadata as we want. There are special pieces of metadata that is documented in the docpad documentation. So for instance, layout is a special metadata. It performs a specific purpose, but I could just put whatever I want here and it'll be okay. So I'll add this image and let's move that out and we'll see. Okay, it's gone now. Whoop. And let's add that then to our layout. So if the document, so the current document we're rendering, 
has image. In CoffeeScript, we have a nice notation, which is a question mark, which is, does this even exist? Right, so this kind of is the same as saying is now or something like that. But I guess here it's just if we want it to be truthy, so any non-empty value. So if it has an image, then let's output that image URL. So document dot image and end. So that's now pulling in that data from the metadata and because we have it there, it's going to be there. For our index page, we don't have that in our metadata. And for example, if I want, if on the deployment stage, I want to pull my images, for example, for Amazon Cloud, so I could uh, rewrite those uh, URLs for static files with the environments variable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you would probably do something on generate before to pull in that dynamic content, expose that to your template data, and then just do something like that. You could download the images into your source directory, and then you could do something like, you know, get database, um, find all where the relative, you know, outdoor path is like images, right? That's like another option available to you. So the database knows of all the files that Doc is aware of. I, uh, I'll cover um, one of our more advanced skeletons. Right. Yeah. You have the images folder in the files folder. Yeah. You could have another images folder in the documents folder. Yeah. And they will be merged. They will be merged together. Merged. What about uh, name resolution? If, if the same name file exists, yeah. the conflict resolution there? Yeah. Docpad will yell at you. Yeah. What will it give reference to? Um, it will just yell at you and say you were in an unknown state, um, please resolve this. <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, cause we, we, that, that's an instance that you need to fix. It, it's like an error, it's like, do I wanna do this error or that error? It, it's still an error. So if we have a problem that we, if we have a problem in the initial generation, Doppad will just crash because that's when, like if we're deploying to a server, we want Doppad to crash on that initial generation because otherwise Doppad could be live and we're like, oh, everything's all fine, even though there's all these errors, right? We want that website to like go down and like make sure we know there's an error. If there's an error on a regeneration, um, it'll just output that to the console and show our growl notification before there's an error, please fix this, like we're in an unknown state, do something about it. Does that answer your question? Sweet. So let's get into one of our more advanced examples. So docpad sites cd kitchen sink. So the kitchen sink is one of the skeletons the community's done up to showcase a whole bunch of advanced things. So for instance, one of these things is we can click this little button and it'll show you the source code of this particular page we're currently on. And let's get that that up. So that's this bit here. So source is one of those special um, metadata properties that Docpad handles for us. So we say, okay, add this, you know, this section for source, click to view this page's source, um, show the relative path of that page and show the source code. So output the source code. We also have a plugin to perform syntax highlighting, which with HTML, we can just do highlight and then the language we want. If we're in Markdown, we can do the thing like this. So coffee and then our awesome code and it would pick that up, the syntax highlighting would pick that up for us. So that's why that's highlighted, because we've got this syntax highlighting plugin to do it for us. Now, this is all these different markups that are available in this particular kitchen sink. So we've got our custom collection. So we've got these nifty section, like this nifties collection, where everything inside our nifties directory, we've got this markups, section which is all these different markers we want to render pages posts whatever and in our particular page 
we say, all right, in our markups, cycle through our markups, convert it to basic JS, like a JavaScript objects rather than the backbone collection. Because otherwise, if it was JavaScript, if say if we got rid of this to JSON, then we would have to do get title because now we're interacting with the backbone collections. So we do to JSON to just let us just do dot title. So those familiar with Backbone, that, that will be quite familiar. If you're not familiar with Backbone, just know to JSON. So this actually outputs what we saw, what we're seeing right here. So we cycle through all our markups. We show like the document URL, the title, and the source code here, so the document file name, the original extension it had, output the content, replace like initial spacing, and here's the output. So use the out file name, use the out extension for the syntax highlighting. So this is like an example of coffee cup to HTML. So that's the source and that's the output. Coffee script to JavaScript, that's the source, that's the output, and just these different things. Now, uh, just our basic blog post section. Now, what one of our clients have actually done um, is they've used Docpad for a law firm. So the law firm um, has all these internal documents, so it's just an intranet website, and they have all these documents that they want to edit and make it accessible via uh, the web. And they've actually enabled client-side editing by Content Editable. Now, this kitchen sink hasn't been kept up to date, so the client-side editing doesn't work, but that is an option you can go if you do want to provide a client, like an ability to edit documents within Docpad for clients. Because as developers, we like to edit files. We're okay with editing files. For clients, generally they need a GUI. Content editable is one way of doing that. Another way which we're exploring currently, which will probably land um, quite soon, so by the end of March, is a way so we can pull in Tumblr data directly into our Docpad database. Now, with our Twitter stuff, for the BA Lupton website, we just expose, like say, these tweets as stuff to our template data, right? So our template data will say, okay, for all tweets, I'll put this one, I'll put that one. But if we want to give these tweets their own page within our website, so if I want to say tweet and then the actual ID of it, then it would need a presence in the Docpad database, or I would need to write a custom route for it and handle that specifically outside of Docpad. So that's the way we're going with Tumblr and also with WordPress. So that way we can pull in our, doc, our Tumblr blog post and add it directly into the source directory documents post, which will be pretty, pretty nifty stuff. And, but from that, we're going to um, as well, the ability to do that is really, really special because clients are very familiar with WordPress. So we can actually use WordPress as our GUI, as our admin interface and render it through Docpad. So we have all the security of a static site, we have all the speed and we have all the abstractions of being able to use whatever preprocessor we want, but we're pulling in the pages and the posts from WordPress. Really, really cool. So, so is client side editing an answer to my question initially about mobile Yeah, yeah. So mobile editing, use Tumblr or use use the WordPress interface and pull that in. We do the Docpad core team are not going in the direction of writing our own GUI. We're leaving that up to people or we're leaving that up so like that the client used content editable and they wrote their own content editable solution. Or you can use like Tumblr WordPress when that stuff gets announced um, next month. But if we focus on that, that's like a huge can of worms that may never end and our resources are better put towards making Docpad better. Yeah. So uh, do, do. Um, where was it? Ah, here. So here's an example of a search page. So this search page takes in this query string of coffee. So I could change this to Hamel and it'll fetch the Hamel document we have. This is a dynamic page. So we say we've added that dynamic true. And when it's a dynamic page, we expose the request object to it. This is the Express.js request object, so we would know this from the Express documentation. And we're able to say, okay, for the query, inside the query string, use the query object. So that's this bit is this bit here. And query is anything I have in here. 
it, probably a better name. <laughs> like I, I should have probably called this like search instead, right? And then have that as search here. So we fetch the query, we say what we're searching for. So right now we're searching for Hamel and we just, in our collection, here we don't use live. Does anyone know why? Because, okay, yeah. Yeah, so everything's in the Docpad database already. We're querying the Docpad database. The for live, that stuff we have when initially Docpad gets loaded up. So live is when we listen to changes. So live is when things get added and we do the query. Here is when we're actually doing a rendering. So at this point in time, everything is already in the database and we want to fetch the latest data right now. So now template engines we would use just find all because we want to query everything in our database and pull it in we could do live but that has no benefit because this render is done and then it's compiled and it's outputted if we were to use live here it would listen to changes it would do all of that but there's no need because it would forget all of that because that template's rendered so we find everything with our query and it's and that's the way it works so that's like an example of a search page and this is impossible with other static site generators because they don't have this backing of an actual server that we can extend. Now native comments, this is experimental. This may work or this may not work. But this is an example of when we actually pull in, we accept a request, we extend the Node.js server to accept a post request and we add that to the Docpad database. And in this case it doesn't work, <laughs> but that's experimental. That's like bleeding edge stuff. So that'll probably be stable pretty soon, but it, it, it's, it's nifty. So if we want to go there. Now, I think we can probably leave it there and take more questions soon, but I really need to go to the toilet. <laughs> so we can probably end, end the recording there. So, and just ask more questions later. So thanks. Sweet. Yeah. Everyone enjoyed it? Yes. yes. Sweet.